Monday morning. Time for our daily devotion. How are you all doing this morning? I hope you all are doing well. Hope you can hear me well. We are live from the Torres residence. It's good to have you this morning. You just go ahead and chime in there if you're if you're there with me. You know, it's a uh, it's a little chilly. I came out here this morning in the backyard and and I uh, had to make sure I had a sweater on. And uh, it's a little cool. Last night it got down to about 62 degrees. Had to turn on the heat this morning. And Souls, good to have you. Becky, good to have you this morning. And uh, and so, you know, we might be interrupted this morning a little bit. Um, just because of the birds. They just love to sing in the morning. And uh, hear them all morning. Hear them all day, actually. And uh, they are beautiful. But uh, they might want to chime in from time to time, okay? Because they get really close. They got a couple of uh, birdhouses here. We got a little friends around us, and and uh, they keep us company. They just kind of wake us up in the morning. Good morning, Ida. Good to have you this morning. Hallelujah. Tammy, it's good to have you. Bill, good morning, sir. Lena, Audra, good to have you this morning. Thank you for joining us. Champion Defender. Amen. I think that's Mary. I'm not sure who that is, but Roxanne, my sister, good to have you. Uh, my dear mother, Carly, good morning. Good morning. Amen. All right. Well, let's go ahead and let's get started with this. I just uh, want to go ahead and give you uh, a word of encouragement this morning. How many of you know that we need a lot of encouragement in our nation? Good encouragement, good words. I think we've heard enough bad words. I think we've heard enough uh, words that are discouraging. I think we've heard enough words that are just all over the place and just uh, against one another. It's exactly what the enemy wants to do. He wants to create division. He knows that where there is division amongst color, amongst the uh, you know the social statuses, uh, if there is division amongst the body of Christ in any way, uh, whether it's by doctrine or denomination or whatever it is, the enemy is doing his job. How many of you know that there is power in unity? Absolute power in unity. Uh, so much so that that we understand that the, the principle of unity is actually uh, universal. It works in the realm of evil and it works in the realm of good. This is why God uh, separated the people uh, at the Tower of, of Babel because they had a unified voice but that unified voice was to come against the Lord, was to come against the things of God and, and to lift up man. And uh, uh, that man did not need God in essence. But uh, that's not the message for today. But the point is this, is that we need a good message. We need a good, good words being spoken over us. Amen? Just good words. Just good words. Edwin, good to have you this morning. The Spomers, Prathers, good to have you. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, I believe the Lord has just given me a little something for you this morning. In fact, it has to do with the word that my daughter Victoria spoke yesterday. If you were not able to hear the, the word of the Lord that my daughter gave yesterday, Sunday morning, uh, was just an absolutely powerful word. Uh, the Lord had really blessed her. And just uh, you could see that there was a cultivated time of this word uh, just, just being a part of her life. And so I, I want to share a small portion of that. Uh, so you can see at the top there we have he who dwells, okay? He who dwells, and of course it has to do with um, Psalms 91. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. See, we have we have the birds just kind of chiming in. I believe they're praising God while, you know, we're doing the Bible study here. And uh, you might hear a chainsaw, an occasional car pass by, but uh, we'll get through it. Amen? All right, let's take a look at Psalms 91. Hope you can read that. Good morning, Ruth. Good to have you this morning. Let's take a look at this. God is so good. I love this. This is, of course, one of the favorites of the Psalms. And uh, very powerful, powerful, comforting scripture. Karen, good to have you. Comforting scripture. Let's go ahead and look at verse 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. Now, I'm only going to really focus on one part of this this uh, this uh, psalm today, but we need to read it in its context, okay? Verse 3, 
Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Let's continue. Verse 6. Nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Last portion. Here we go. Verse 11. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and upon the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore I will deliver him, I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him, and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Absolutely beautiful scripture. One that we always go back to, and we always pay attention to. But there's, there's a couple of words there that I really want to pay attention to this morning, if, if you would. Virginia, it's good to have you this morning. Melissa, Diane, good to have you. And so the words that I really would like to pay attention to are the words in the beginning, because like my daughter was saying yesterday, there, there's a caveat to this particular psalm, and of course to many of the aspects of God and the principles of God. And, and how many of you know that, that when there's this, like, this whole context of God's blessing, what He will do for you, what He promises you, that there's a portion many times that says, if, if, if you do this, if you do this. And I think that many times we tend to forget the ifs because the caveat is the if. And, uh, and so likewise, with this, with this particular psalm, there, there is that same kind of connotation there. And let's go back to the top portion for just a moment. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So I, I want to take a look at a word this morning because I believe it's something that we have to really pay attention to. What does it mean to dwell? Because sometimes, how many of you know that with people, many different people, sometimes you can get a word out. And uh, uh, like my daughter was sitting down with some of the young ladies at the church yesterday and they were just doing, uh, they were just having some fun together and they were doing like this personality uh, questionnaire type thing. And, and, uh, and one of the questions was, was that what what do you do that makes other people think uh, it's weird? And then the discussion came up about well uh, it depends on your it depends on your definition of weird. Okay, so uh, three different people had three different three different definitions of what the word weird meant. Of course, there is one definition, but culturally speaking, there can be different definitions. Uh, uh, you know, they have the urban dictionary nowadays, so um, there, there's different definitions. So uh, likewise with dwells, he who dwells uh, in the shadow. Okay, let's take a look at that for just a moment. Let's, let's just look at it, okay? I want to look at it in the Hebrew. And I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to butcher the, the word, but dwells is uh, yeshab uh, in the Hebrew. Now let's take a look at this for a minute because I think that we can expand it. One thing, that before I read this, let me say this to you. One thing that many people don't know is that about my daughter Victoria is that she's 25 years old. Of course, she's very young, um, but she's very wise. Um, she has a good head on her shoulders. Um, but the word that she delivered yesterday, she delivered with poise and grace and maturity. Okay, well, you might think, well, oh, she's 25 years old. What does she understand about these kinds of things? And, and, and the point of that right there is the aspect of this whole scripture and, and that caveat that this whole context is required of is the first part 
of this context. He who dwells. My daughter started dwelling uh, with the Lord at a very young age. I want to say about 10 years old. There were times that, that uh, for those of you who don't know, there are times uh, about her life that we, we would be at home and we would be getting ready for dinner or lunch or something like that on a given Saturday or any given day. And, uh, and I would ask my other two daughters, where's your sister? Go get your sister. Well, Dad, we don't know where she is. And, and where she was was that she was in these little, these little playrooms, these little cubbyhole playrooms that, that uh, were on each side of their bedrooms that they could kind of hide and, and play. I built them uh, back when we built the house. And, uh, and we would find her in there praying we would find her in there worshiping at a very young age. And, and this would happen throughout the years. And she would, she would find her place uh, with him, that dwelling place at a very young age. So that message that she spoke yesterday was not something that, that just uh, she, she picked out of the Bible last week and began to study it. This has been a, a lifelong experience with her. And so the word dwells means this. To sit down, to dwell, to remain, to settle. It even means to marry. So another part of that word uh, there also means to abide, continue, cause to or make to dwell, habitation. And so we can take a look at this word and, and we can take it at face value and uh, we can say, well, you know, I, I talk to the Lord, you know, throughout the day uh, when I'm driving to work or when I'm on the way. And w- when I have some time, that's when I talk to the Lord. I've even heard some people say, well, I, I talk to him when I'm in the restroom, you know, when they have some time. <laughs> and uh, uh, I think about that for just a moment because... Let's just say you are married. Let's just say you have a a girlfriend, boyfriend. Let's just say that that's the only time that you really talk to them, that you really met with them, is is when you're driving down the road, or when you're in the restroom, or uh, when you have some quick few minutes for them. That's not dwelling. That's not the meaning of the word to dwell and to abide. A relationship is much more than that. To marry is much more than that. You know, even before you marry, there were specific times, I know that even with my wife and I, that we would get together specifically just to meet and be face-to-face and enjoy one another, sit down and enjoy one another. And so this is something that, that is much more than than uh, surface value relationship. It is much more than than uh, uh, taking a few minutes out of the day and while you're driving down the road, while you just have some time. No, this is very specific. This dwelling, the, the whole of 91, Psalms 91, is very specific to the first verse. And so once you allow yourself to to dwell and to realize that, wait a minute, this is a a setting aside time specifically for my God, for my Lord, for my my Savior, for my husband, uh, for my God. And so we have to allow ourselves to begin to think on, on these terms because all of Psalms 91, people may think, well, why aren't I receiving the blessings of Psalms 91? And, and the question, or the answer to that question is very simple. Maybe you haven't quite learned how to dwell yet. Maybe you haven't quite learned how to abide yet. And I'm going to tell you something personal for myself that uh, has really even uh, just revolutionized my my relationship with the Father <clears throat> is that, you know, uh, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. You, you know, when I would meet with the Lord or when I would read with the Lord, it would be, you know, different times throughout the day. There wasn't a really set time. I just knew that I, I would have to get before the Lord. And, and much of my reading time was at night uh, uh, before I went to bed. And the Lord began to, to call me, uh, like my daughter was even speaking of, uh, call me into that, that other secret place. And, uh, 
and I, I heard a message, my wife and I heard a message by Dr. Tony Evans, and, and the whole subject of that message was on prayer, and what was on intimacy. And, and he began to speak to the congregation. He says, uh, like that scripture that Jesus says, uh, can you not just give me one hour? Can you not just give me one hour? And, uh, and that struck my heart. I mean, it pierced my heart. Of course, I can give the Lord one hour. And, uh, but I began to do it in the morning because I'm not uh, a very, uh, very much a morning person at all. Uh, it was, it's, it's just rough for me to wake up in the morning. But either way, um, I began to give the Lord an hour in the morning. Began to just set my alarm for 5 a.m. and or 5:30 because I hit the snooze too many times, and uh, and I began to give Him an hour that is is very specific to Him. And and as I did that, as I'm continuing to do that, it is a very special place, a very a very anointed place. He comes and He meets with me. There's a there's a there's an overshadowing, like this scripture says, that I feel not just in that hour, but throughout the day. And so I would really like to ponder this week upon Psalms 91 and really, really begin to define what it means to dwell, really begin to define what it means to to set before him in that way. And so there's a um, that other word there that we just got to tie this into is that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. So the, the next word there, and I want to begin to tie these two together, dwells and in the secret place. So I'm just going to give you a quick definition of what the secret place is. It's very simple. It's not long. It's just very simple. And it's just a very private place, a place of protection, a place that is secret. That means that that no one else is there. That means that there's no distractions. That means that it's just you and him. That means that it, it, you, you would go to a place specifically just to meet with him. And, and that becomes a constant place. That becomes that place where he is absolutely first in your life. Not your children, not your husband, not your wife, uh, not all these other things, not, not TV, but him. He becomes first. He becomes that place that is your dwelling, okay? That is that place of constant being, to sit down, to remain, to settle, to marry, to continue, to habitate. Because as the scripture goes on, it begins to say, he who dwells in the secret place of the Almighty, uh, let's go to it, because I can't quote the whole thing by, (laughs) shall abide under the shadow, the shadow of the Almighty. And that is so precious to me when when I read that. It is so precious that that his, his shadow is not just something, once again, it's not just something in the, in the hour that you're meeting with him in the morning. It is something that, that follows you throughout the day. Okay, this is why the rest of the context of Scripture can really come alive to you and that you can really walk in it and be confident because of the time that you have spent with him in the secret place. This is why my daughter can minister a word like she did at age 25 with passion, with zeal, and fervency. Because this is not just a word, this is an experience with her with us. It is an experience that we have uh, with the Father. It is a place that we remain. Does that make sense? I hope so. I hope this is a blessing to you. I really believe that this is one of those keys that God gives us throughout his scripture. There's those ifs, there's those thens, um, And we began to see and we began to understand that that God wants us to to walk uh, according to his word. But sometimes we leave some things out and we still expect the blessings. We still expect his promises to be there. And God has caveats when it comes to much of his scripture. 
And so I just want to leave you with that, church. Um, God is on the move. God is God is precious. And uh, I hope that you enjoy your day. It's going to be, uh, I think, 70-some degrees. And uh, uh, go out and enjoy your day. Say hello to somebody. Reach out to somebody and uh, and just, just love on them. Let the love, the love of the Lord come through you. And please, let's continue to be in prayer for Midland. Let's continue Midland, Michigan. Uh, uh, of course, the... Uh, the floodings that have happened there, there are still many, many, many people, thousands of people that are displaced and, and have uh, no funds for, for their homes. Uh, let's continue to be in prayer and intercession for the, the riots that are happening. Um, of course, there is peaceful protest, but, but uh, you know, there's just got to be some other uh, not so pleasant people. I'll just, I'll just say that. And, uh, and so let, let's continue in prayer for that. And uh, continue in prayer for our nation. Continue in prayer for revival in our nation. It's happening. It's coming forth. I can literally feel Sunday, Saturday night into Sunday. But Saturday night, we literally felt the rumblings of revival within those six hours of intercession that we had. Six hours of intercession literally felt like one hour. I kid you not. Just ask the people that were there. And it was absolutely powerful, but we literally felt the rumblings of revival happening in that service. And God began to minister uh, one unto another. God was just flowing through the body of Christ that night. And, uh, and so, church, continue to be an expectation for revival to come because you are going to be a people that learn how to dwell in that secret place. We love you. Bill, it's good to have you this morning. Joshua, good to have you. Um, church, you be blessed, and we will see you again here soon.